Ready to rock? Good day and welcome to Flow Mountain Bike on this very hot and sweaty Sydney afternoon. Mm -hmm. We're here to talk to you about the Rocky Mountain Vertex 990 RSL, which is Rocky's second from the top carbon 29er hardtail cross country race machine. What's RSL stand for? Return Services League. Mm, I like a good Parmigiana and a uh, and a member's special price to his old. How do they make them so cheap there? Good on you. This bike is the one that uh, I chose to ride uh, at the four day Cape to Cape MTB stage race over in Western Australia um, quite recently. And I gotta say, I'm pretty bloody happy with my decision to ride this bike. It was fantastic. Yeah, you've always been a big fan of this bike for many reasons. Like uh, mm -hmm. for a hardtail, you, 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 tend, you tend to go pretty quick on it. Why is that? It's definitely a very um, comfortable and compliant hardtail. Um, a lot of carbon 29ers uh, will beat the hell out of you, but this one has a bit of forgiveness to it too. But more importantly, the geometry is fantastic. The geometry is really fun, really playful, um, and great on the descents. Um, and that's what really drew me to this bike. Tell us a little bit about uh, Rocky Mountain as a brand though. Uh, Rocky Mountain, I guess, is a brand that has a very strong following um, in Canada in particular where the brand is from and it's always had um, outside of Canada uh, an image is more of a, of a gravity focused brand uh, it sort of stems from it's kind of free ride past especially around the late 90s early 2000s wow. and how do you think the uh, I guess that gravity uh, culture has influenced a carbon 29er hardtail well yeah definitely the descending properties of this bike are fantastic like it's um, as I said it's, it's compliant and um, it's quite slack in the head angle it's not too long in the top tube um, so it keeps a quite playful kind of feel about it. Um, and it's also got a great um, capacity to run big tyres. It comes with a tapered head tube, so it's nice and stiff. It's got a 142 by 12 rear end. All those sort of, I guess, stiffness enhancing measures uh, are implemented on this bike. Um, and so it's, it's very confident. Uh, it holds a line incredibly well when the going gets rough. It doesn't get bucked around like a lot of hardtails would. The whole frame feels nice and stiff. Um, and like I just, just hold that line. And one of the things that stood out was just um, how consistent and reliable it was. Over the four days of that race, um, I literally did not touch it, aside from leaving the chain. Um, the fork is a set and forget kind of item, a solo air, RockShox Sid, just set the pressures, off you go. Um, it's easily converted to tubeless, so again, just pop the valves in, pop those tubeless tyres on some sealant, and boom. The SRAM drivetrain for me was also a real highlight. It runs a complete XO drivetrain, uh, from the shifters through to the cranks, through to the rear derailleur, and it was just consistent, precise and reliable the whole way through. What are your favourite aspects of the frame construction there? Yeah, there's a, there's a few elements that I really like. Um, first of all, it's just the look of it. It looks like a, a dirt jumper frame in some, in some ways. Like it's got that super low top tube. Um, it's just yeah, got a, a real compact kind of look and feel about it. Uh, other elements that really impress me are the, the cable routing. I love the internal cable routing. Um, with the exception of the rear brake line, everything runs uh, internal through the down tube except uh, for the rear to rally cable where bizarrely underneath the chain stay it has a section of exposed cable which I really disagree with. It's probably one of the only gripes that I've got with this bike. Looks pretty light. How did it go on the scales? Yep, it came in at 9.96 kilograms on the Dream Crusher um, which, is, which is pretty light. Um, cracking that sub 10 kilo mark which is very important to a lot of people for Just. that reason. Just. Um, I, as I said, made a couple of changes that actually added a little bit of weight. The Continental tyres with tubes were actually lighter than this bike set up tubeless with the Schwalbe tyres that I put on there because I went for the snake skin version of the tyres which are a little bit heavier um, but I'll always take that um, that durability over lightweight tyres any day. And why the uh, Rocky Mountain Vertex uh, 990? Return Services League. Who is this bike for? This bike is undoubtedly for the cross country racer, um, the marathon racer or um, yeah, someone who lives where the trails are nice and smooth. Um, it's not a trail bike. If you want a trail bike, look at the dual suspension element instead of a Vertex um, or something uh, with a bit more travel. This is, this is a cross-country race bike um, and there's, there's scope to make it even lighter if you wanted to and, and do all kinds of trick mods to this bike down the track. Whack a carbon bar on there, you know, save some more weight with the wheels. There's heaps, of, heaps and heaps of areas where you could turn this into an even more serious cross-country racing machine than it is. Crazy. Crazy. Let's go to the RSL.